Welcome to Entrepreneur's Podcast, the podcast for developpreneurs, the podcast where you get to be a fly on the wall listening to real conversations of three developers trying to tackle the challenges they face as entrepreneurs. We're live. Yep. All right. What's up? I see the glare off my head. <clears throat> I could move, but I don't care. <laughs> You're the only one who's thinking about it. <laughs> now everybody's thinking about it. Yeah, that really, that, yeah, nice sheen on his noggin there. So, so Manny looks like he's in a detention room somewhere. <laughs> John is John is fleeing the authorities today, and and who knows where yeah. Chuck is? That's right. <laughs> he's in detention, straight from the principal's office. Oh yeah. I'm, uh, I'm at the university club. I got a private room here just so I could chit chat. Nice. Yeah. Oh. So I don't. I don't know about this new headset that I got. It's um, it's a gaming headset. I, I'm looking, trying to find a, a nice wireless headset to replace the one that I have, and this thing weighs about eight pounds. <laughs> yeah. Which I don't really mind, but the, the what I do mind is the fact that it very gently sits over my ears. So when I shake my head, it like wants to fall off. So I think it's gonna, unfortunately, probably go back to Amazon. Well, the new one is wireless. Like the microphone is also wireless. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have this is is wireless with the wireless mic as well. But uh, the the quality on this mic is terrible. I'm, I was hoping that this this quality would be better, the um, sound quality. But so many wireless mics. I keep coming back to just wired for doing like any kind of good quality recording. Yeah, this is. I mean, I'm using this right now, and this is wired. Yeah, I've thought about getting wireless mics, but it's mostly for when I'm like out doing stuff, um, like at CES and stuff. It'd be nice to just do it, but I mean, yeah. I'm I've been doing interviews here, and you can see that I've got you know a wired setup. So yeah, yeah, I use it mainly for Skype calls and stuff when I because I, so, I walk around the basement when I do that. <clears throat> yeah, that makes sense. I have been using my uh, AirPods for stuff. But. Yeah, they, they work good on the iPhone, I think, but they don't work good on computers. Yeah. <laughs> no. They what? work okay for me. On they don't work good on Mac? They don't work good for... for I, I have a Mac, and they don't work very well for me on my Mac. It's it's really tough to get them to connect. And then, like, yeah, periodically... So I, I, I did it when I first got them, and it would they worked for, like, a day or two, and then I just they just wouldn't connect at all. Like, I... I it was it was ridiculous. So and then like the Mac is aluminum, so it, it the range on the Bluetooth is really short. I think because it's basically like encased in a Faraday cage, so <laughs> it doesn't work all that well. I have the new MacBook Pro, and I haven't had any problems with it. I wonder. I, I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not. But you have to you have to remember something about Bluetooth. Josh is kind of like uh, if you've seen that movie <laughs> Powder. <laughs> He's kind of like the powder guy, that albino dude. Like Josh, if Josh touches Bluetooth, it it just fucking breaks. So yeah, pretty so much. So whatever whatever Josh says about any kind of Bluetooth device, you have to take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, it's true. It's true in Josh's world, but it's not necessarily true in in everyone else's reality. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, the I have not had any issues with the the, the Bluetooth connection on the, the Apple headphones on my yeah. phone. Um. Mm -hmm. I, it, it they don't work for like um, I can't use it for a lot of this other stuff that like Siri doesn't work on them for some reason like it quit working a week after I bought them and I haven't been able to get it to work since so <laughs> my my uh, my my woes continue. <laughs> Man, at least you don't have to do anything with technology, right? Yeah, I know. Technology makes our lives easier by making them harder. That's it. So. <laughs> Already. All right, so what's going on this week? What's everyone been up to? Okay, so um, I'll go. Yeah. I'll go. Yeah. So I just uh, kind of did a pre price increase on the product here on my end. Um, got around like 13% uh, on page conversion, um, which is decent. That's um, good. Yeah. Um, 
one thing I was thinking about while I was doing some research on like writing my emails yesterday, I found, I mean, I had done this research before, but now it was like, again, it was like a realization. Mental toughness is a word that has average keyword volume research, like keyword volume is like monthly 6,000, 7,000, but self-confidence and self-esteem are like 200,000. Mm. So then I was like, shit, I need to rebrand this into like self-confidence because it can be done. I mean, the books are the same. It doesn't really matter. It's just a more of a marketing exercise and like, or just calling it, you know, mental conf mental toughness and confidence, something like that. So I was like playing with that. So yesterday I kind of made some changes to the sales page to that regard. I made it 2X mental toughness and confidence instead of 2X mental toughness. Now that's, you know, I, I, I don't really have any numbers to show if it turned out any better, but going forward, I can tailor all my marketing and email effort to that because the numbers are just like orders of magnitude different. I mean, I guess, us guys, we like the idea of mental toughness because it's just kind of smazzy. I mean, fancy, but uh, confidence by itself is like, or low self-esteem is another one like that search so much or improves. Like these are all like 100K terms while mm -hmm. mental toughness is like 500K mm -hmm. terms. So. Yeah, yeah. That, that it doesn't necessarily mean that it's necessarily better. Well, I mean, I have a couple thoughts on that. One is maybe maybe the answer to that is just to create a self-confidence product as well or a self-esteem one um, because, in, 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 I don't know, I mean, maybe it is to convert the mental toughness, but to some degree also just because the search volume is, is low on mental toughness doesn't mean that people that when presented with the idea of developing mental toughness Mm -hmm. that they would be more likely to buy that right so for me for for example i would be more likely to buy something like oh, i'll give you a good example there is a book that came out that was called the title of it was called uh uh shit now now i forgot the name of the book it was <laughs> how memorable is it it was um Great. uh it was no it was the it was the, I, the whiff hoffman one where that reporter oh was, um, um what doesn't kill us or something yes what doesn't yeah. kill us as a as yeah. soon as i saw the book title it was called what doesn't kill us i was like i'm i don't even know what this book is about i'm fucking buying this book right <laughs> um so so what i'm saying is that like no, people might not know to search for mental toughness because it's not just a word it's not something that you know that you necessarily are looking for but it still might connect stronger with people because it's more specific than self-confidence self-esteem so i mean you can test it out and see but my inclination would be to keep the mental toughness thing, but then just make another product, self-confidence, you know, self-esteem, building your, you know, one of those type of things. Yeah, the books are almost the same. So it weren't even like, right. it's tough to try and sell two different products when they're almost the same books, right? Maybe five books here or there. So at that point, it's more like, a, yeah, that, that would be tough to do uh, unless... I mean, I literally create a product that's not related to book summaries. But if I were just to book summaries, then both of them are so intertwined. I could literally tomorrow rebrand the product and sell it as self-confidence and people would still buy the same thing. You, or, you could do a test too. You could do a rebrand, have another sales page, just change the name of the thing mm -hmm. and have the two products and then do an A-B test on your, on your list and see which converts better. And then, uh, and, and I, if it converts better or near the same on the list, then it would be better to rename it to the self-esteem or confidence because then it'll also do better with search traffic. So, yeah, I guess that's the next iteration when I get around to doing it because I'm done with the current promotion right yeah. now. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think where this is more, probably more helpful is thinking about YouTube content going forward mm -hmm. because yeah. like, you know, you, for that, like a hundred thousand percent you want to be going after those those big big keywords um you know and on youtube you've got you know you've got some traction so you can reasonably expect to own those and then whatever you sell them like once you get them into your funnel the name of the product and what, how you're targeting the product doesn't matter like if your an answer to low self-esteem is mental toughness then you mm -hmm. can make that you can make that case right so it doesn't matter as much once people get into your world, but you're casting a much broader net um, if you're mm -hmm. going after the 
the stuff that people are actually looking for. Yeah, yeah. But like that's that. a really valuable discovery you made. So, yeah. yeah. One other thing just to keep in mind with this is uh, if you're changing things up to like rank with SEO for this, um, the, uh, the, the more search the more search searches people do for that term, usually the harder it is to rank for that. So just keep that in mind too. You know, it's going to be yeah. a longer tail if you're going to try and rebrand anything that way. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of two ways to look at it. One is the search side of the equation, but one is also like, what is it that people are more aware of? Or what is it that people yeah. are pain, people think associated as a pain point? If right. it's 1,000, that means more people are even aware of that problem. That's so true. That problem compared to sell the problem of lack of mental toughness. That's like sometimes people don't even say that. You know, people when I say, oh, mental toughness, they're like, oh, I don't need mental toughness. And like, <laughs> what I need is more confidence. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So then uh, now I'm realizing it's like right. people think they're tough, but confidence or self esteem that's where people kind of like start to be like, oh, yeah, I could use I don't, some need, I don't need mental toughness, I just need to learn how to not quit. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> I get very often like, I don't need mental toughness, and it's like a marketing effort just to sell them on the problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, so for the promotion as well, I was thinking, should I make it mental toughness and confidence, like title and everything else in the pro, like in the sales page at least? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's gonna hurt. To yeah, do I don't that. see what, I don't see that it would hurt. But I'm gonna be, I mean, the emails that I'm gonna be doing are gonna be. I, John, John's audience is already pretty familiar with the yeah. mental toughness stuff, so I'm gonna kind of hit it from that angle. I think. Okay. Oh, I I need to. You guys need to help, tell me what videos I need to create for this as well. So, oh, okay. Because um, because I should do videos for this one. Like, yeah. does it make sense? So, okay. Yeah. Well, what do you want to do, John? Like, should it be mental toughness and confidence, or do you just want to do like bulldog? Mind? Like, well, what do you want me to title it? Because we could change it right now. I think let's go for this. Mental toughness makes the most sense. I think that's the best best oh, wow. angle to say you know because then it's re then it's really targeted right because then the message is very clear it's like you look you need to develop mental toughness this is why right uh, you know if, if we if we try to say and confidence also then i think it, it's more of a diluted message so mm -hmm. i'd rather just hit hard with mental toughness i think we can make self-confidence and self-esteem as the end result of mental mm -hmm. toughness, as the outcome that you get as you Josh, saying like use that as the way to get into that. Chuck, <laughs> Chuck's lights just Chuck's went out. Gone, it's gone there dark. Yeah, there we go. Motion sensor. Motion. Just <laughs> motion sensor in this room, and I hadn't moved. Nice. Yeah. That's gonna probably happen again. I, I'm yeah. gonna guess three more times. That it's gonna happen. Well, you need to do Tony Robbins style, jumping up and down every few minutes. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Yesterday. Um, I I was in here by myself for about a half hour, so I just put my head down because I was so tired on the table, and I fell asleep, woke up, it was totally dark in here. <laughs> Where am I? Where am I? I've been abducted. Yeah, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> but you know, that just brings to mind, now you can do that, right? Like. I, I just it just brings to mind like working in a cubicle and like doing that like and pretending mm -hmm. like you're not sleeping you know on the <laughs> desk and it's like now now it's like you still probably have that guilty feeling but now you're like oh, I actually I could just do that if I want to so. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so just let me know afterwards just send me an email with what how many videos you guys want and okay. uh, and I'll just I'll make them. And then I'll I'll just drop them and you, you can I'll coordinate with you, Josh. I guess to have Rodrigo edit them and get them up there quick. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. What oh, about interview? Okay. Worked best last time. I don't know which of our videos worked best last time. I think we can do more of those. Th this one will be easy for me to just like because this yeah. is like well, you, you just know, did the video. Did that video? You just did the walkthrough of the product, right? And that sold. A bunch, yeah. yeah so, I'll, I'll do, yeah. Basically, yep. Yep. It seems like that's the, that's really easy to do, and it it also just works. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what you can, what would be cool is like because there's so many books, sixty books, you can literally do like multiple walkthroughs, like one about one area, one about another area. 
So that way people can actually look at it from different angles. Mental toughness leading to self-confidence or, you know, becoming a warrior, becoming a bulldog, like all those different areas. You hit different books because you already read probably 50% of the books. So you can talk about them separately in those different overviews. And so people will be more excited about it. Yeah. Oh, so I um I interviewed uh, Tom Billu on my on YouTube yesterday. Yeah, nice. So that was cool. Yeah, I don't know who that is. He's the founder oh. of Qu of Quest Nutrition, uh, okay. you know Quest Bars, mm -hmm. and then he also he has a company that he started. He left Quest basically. I mean, he's still owner, but like passive owner. Uh, and oh, really? He has a, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's going around I hear these days. <laughs> uh, but he has another another company now called Impact Theory, which is basically a YouTube channel where he, it's uh self developed personal development and, and okay. motivation. So yeah. Yes. Is that what he did the David Goggins interview for? Uh -huh. he's yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So my uh battery's charging, so is he a billionaire? Uh how about forty minutes? One Sorry, I'm doing interviews here for the conference. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so the the speakers keep coming in. Is now a good time to do the interview? Hey, is Tom a billionaire? Will you? Uh, I don't think he's a billionaire. I think I he think could, he, um, he's a zillionaire. <laughs> <laughs> He, he's definitely in the deck of millions, at least. So, in hundreds for sure, right? Uh, I don't know. I think Quest Nutrition is probably worth about. I, I think last I heard it was five hundred million. I could be wrong. I could be just pulling numbers out of my ass. But uh, they so. have four hundred million in revenue. They're, I think they're they're being assessed over a billion dollars right now. Okay. Okay. So so, yeah. So on. On paper, he's worth probably at least a couple hundred million for sure. So, hey man, let's hope he becomes a billionaire so you know you have a billionaire. In <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll have to. I'll have to see what um, what to do with this with this interview. Like, as as far as like you know, taking it forward from here, because we're we're doing similar stuff. He actually, his channel actually blew up to like 200 i think it's like 260 or 270 thousand at the time when i like uh you know proposition for for the interview i think it was at like 70 or 80 thousand or somewhere oh, wow. around there so yeah, but he he's was, just pouring he, money into it was that uh, he's using his quest money to build this it's kind of unfair <laughs> well, yeah but, <laughs> that's what he was saying was that that's what he's doing is he's using his quest money to build this but that's but that makes sense i mean that's how you that's that's a good business model like a lot of entrepreneurs that are successful entrepreneurs have done that you know you look at richard branson and you know you look at elon musk and a lot of different entrepreneurs that ended up really becoming successful what they did was they took they parlayed their their earnings from one company into another one in order to be able to, you know, to get ahead faster. Mm -hmm. What Ty Lopez did to get millions of subscribers. We should go to yeah. LA sometime. He does recordings. What's that? We should go to LA sometime. He does live recordings. Oh, to, in LA to, for Ty Lopez. No, no, no. For for uh, Tom Billu. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I should. I, I, um, I need to get Ty Lopez on the interview as well, though. <laughs> ask him to be on the uh, um, uh, mentor box. Ah, uh, yeah. Some like how he's making a million dollars a month on mentor box. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys know the story, right? Because the funny thing is, everyone believes mentor mentor box is doing so well because they're freaking everywhere, right? Their ads are freaking crazy. They're like killing. Like they're all over Facebook, but I literally got uh, like I I signed up to become a potential investor with them, so I got to see all their numbers. They're bleeding like crazy. They're a yeah. million dollar the red right now, and they're continuing to bleed like hundred thousand a month, even more than that. So 
So it's pretty interesting. Like the world outside believes they're killing it, but inside they're struggling. Just like they're trying to raise convertible debt, and like they're trying to reach out to people to make make hero. I guess. Nice. <laughs> and and that's a lot of people. See, that's the thing. Is like people keep on telling me they're like, oh no 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 no, Facebook advertising works because you see people keep on advertising on there. So if someone keeps on advertising on Facebook, they must be making money. Bull fucking shit. It doesn't mean <laughs> jack shit. It just means they could be dumb. They could have a lot of money they're burning, right? They could be mm-hmm. like not, you know, they could be just staying alive and, and slowly sinking underwater, right? And that's, and that, I, I still have yet to see, like, I don't know, if someone's listening to this, this podcast and you can show me. Like I will get on a Skype call with you and I'll give you some free. Well, actually you should be coaching me if you, if you've got it, but show me a fucking profitable Facebook ad. Show me one. I I know people are claiming it and I know that maybe there's somewhere out there, but actually show me it. I've, as, as far as I've extended this challenge and as many people I've talked to, no one has ever said, well, no, I I can, I've got a buddy or I, I can show you it, but I have yet to see a profitable Facebook ad ever in my life. So, oh, man. no, my friends, my friends are affiliate marketers. They're killing it on Facebook, being affiliates for other people, making like shitload of money over there, like hundred thousand dollars a month kind of deal. So I will definitely introduce to some of these guys and they will. I mean, it's kind of black hat, though. So, yeah, the, the, the anything affiliate on Facebook is going to be black hat. They're like that is like a crazy world. They they have like the. um you see those ads, like at least I, I used to see ads a lot for the um, the Chuck Norris, like goodbye to Chuck Norris type articles. And it was yeah. like, they had these fake news sites. Oh, here we go, <laughs> fake news. But they, <laughs> they had like cloned like, uh, the, like the entertainment, like one of the entertainment channel websites. And they were running traffic to um, to this clone of the, that looked exactly like a, like, you know, the, a, a real, um, I like, I think it was, e, um, I forget the name of the show, but it, they cloned this website and they were, they basically get banned. Their account gets banned like every couple of hours. Okay, so like, that, yeah. That doesn't yeah. count. That's not, yeah, legit. no, it doesn't it count. It has to be no. legit. I yeah. want to see, this is what I want to see. You have your own product that you are selling, that you're using Facebook ads to, to sell. That's what I want to see. Not <laughs> some kind of, <laughs> Hey, Pat Flynn, if you're listening, I know you sell your uh, podcasting course on Facebook profitably. So if you are listening, we'll talk about it. <laughs> and, well, and, and see, I think there's a lot of people that think they're making money on Facebook, but they don't track the analytics enough. So oh, they're making way. money and they just assume that it's that the ads are profitable, but they're not fucking profitable. So next week we can talk, we can talk to uh, Pat about it, but there's another guy. He okay. released a new with these two guys I have met a couple of months ago in his group. I think you were not there at the time. They're teaching guys how to, they're teaching people how to be loan officers uh, and they're doing it profitably just through Facebook ads. So we can talk about that too. And his interview is on smart passive income now on the podcast. I wouldn't check okay. it out, but I know those guys. I've met those guys. I just, I just don't believe it until I actually see it again. Like I said, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that, people are are lying on purpose or that some kind of deception i just think that that if i were to actually look at the analytics and look at like i haven't seen anyone to be able to show me okay facebook ad here's the funnel here's the actual profitability you're right so and, and and you know and we we've we've definitely experimented a lot with not that we're experts but you know especially josh has done a lot uh here and it's just it's so far from profitable it's that it's, uh, it's ridiculous higher price point product it has a much higher likelihood of working compared to a lower price point. well not not really because the the higher well it's not that it's it's so we're with our with, with our experiments we are not even in the universe of of where it would even work with a high price product because when when you can't like so when you can't sell a low price product that mean like if if your low price product isn't selling, that means you are going to need a hundred or a thousand times more traffic just to sell one high price product. Mm-hmm. Like you need to be able to sell a five dollar thing to people coming in off of Facebook and have that work pretty well. Um, and what we see is like 
we, we, we collected like around 500 leads that I tracked. I knew exactly that they, I knew that they came from Facebook. We got, we, we, um, collected about 500 leads and then we did a fire sale on how to market yourself as a software developer, $300 product marked it down to $49 and we sold one. Mm. And it was because, um, the, just the, the, the people that were signing up weren't opening emails. And that's the problem I've seen every time I've done paid traffic is that yeah. it so, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You, I would need to get like the leads would have to be 10 times cheaper than they are to even be in the realm of, of profitable. So, so you're right about that part. I think Facebook traffic doesn't really work so well with email marketing on the back end to actually drive sales. What people are doing though, is Facebook traffic directly to a webinar or a video sales page. Like you literally have to drive sales very quickly in the first step or the next step, which is through a webinar, which is building your authority, building your credibility, building your trust with them. Email, by the time they get onto email, they, they don't have the same level of trust as your organic. So emails right. won't get open. Right? But webinar mm -hmm. is where most people are converting. Maybe, maybe. It, but but again, webinar is is okay. I don't know. I mean, then it blurs the line. Then it's not really like Facebook ads that are, that's driving the. That's not really your leads. Your leads are the webinar. It's like if you have to have a manual process in there. If it's, I mean, it's it's pretty damn clunky. Like the the amount now now here's the thing. Oh, here's here's actually the thing. So the time and the money that you spend actually in the webinar needs to get factored into the equation, into the ad spend, which if you factor that in, you might not be at a profit again. Well, if so, you automate that process and if you have evergreen webinars working, then it's working. Like it takes a little time and effort to get those working, I agree with you. Or the other way to work Facebook ads is to get them on a call. Like you know, if, even if the lead is $10 or $20, but if you are a marketing agency or if you're selling a $2,000 coaching program or $5,000, then it actually would be much more likely to work. But I agree. If we're trying to do straight up email marketing after that, I think every medium is different, right? We can do that with YouTube, with podcasts, because they have a lot of built-in trust and credibility with us. But with paid traffic, it doesn't have like it doesn't do the same thing. Like every medium has to have different kind of marketing to follow up, is what I'm getting at. And I and I would agree with you on everything theoretically. But my answer is do it and show me, right? Like, or, or show me someone who's doing it and have them show me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, theoretically, everything everything sounds great. But but again, it just comes down to do it. Like, if it works, then do it and, and make money. But um, otherwise, you know, yeah, theoretically. And we could test it out. But um, but yeah. Well, next, that's, next, yeah. next week, let's talk, let's talk about it at the Pat Flynn group. Because I think okay. the girl, the Hawaiian retreats, like the five thousand dollar retreats, she's also killing it with that. Five thousand dollar freaking retreat, though. But see, see, I think a lot of people too, which you have. That's why you have to be careful. And actually, I want to see the analytics. A lot of people are running Facebook ads to their audience, <laughs> to the list already, and it's like, are they doing retargeting? And then it's like, uh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, retargeting ads are profitable because it's your fucking customer already. What the fuck? Like, it's like, <laughs> like it doesn't, like, yes, people who buy from you buy from you. Like, they see your ad and then you, they, you know, I mean, it, if it, I want cold freaking leads, you know, look like audience is fine, but make sure you're not actually targeting your own audience. And I think a lot of cases, that's 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 the case as well so hmm. the analytics have to be have to be really good to actually make sure that it is really profitable i see your point but there are people who are converting it is what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> john's gonna be driving to your house manny you better be better watch out <laughs> show show me the money i have to see <laughs> i have to see it i have to see it to believe it Next yeah. Wednesday, we're talking about it. Next Wednesday, we're talking about it to Pat and see who. All has, right, we'll look at their ledgers. Yeah, yeah. So I have I'm some data. Close. I go ahead. Oh, check your you're just falling asleep over there. Is that what you're saying? It's okay, sorry. Okay, I have some. Uh, I so I've been watching our stats um, to see how the great, the great 
blog URL update of 2018 has been playing out. Uh -huh. And uh, so, so we're, we're a week into it. I did it last Wednesday. Uh, actually, yeah, pretty much exactly, or last, last Friday, rather, um, almost exactly a week ago. And it looks like we, our traffic has increased somewhere between 8 and 15% as wow. a result of making. Wow. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we, um, like, it was like, I, I've been watching the organic traffic, and the first day, the first two days, not, nothing really happened. We tracked exactly the same as where we had been. And then the next day, it went up about 5%, and then it went up to about, went up by about 8%. And then the last couple of days has actually been, like, more, like, closer to 20%. Wow. So I don't know how it's going to play out long term, but it looks like um, all the keywords that I'm tracking as well in, um, I'm using ahref.com to track keywords now, and we got, like, a significant ranking boost on a bunch of keywords. Like, we went, we went up... Um, I think I'm tracking like over 200 keywords and we went up in about 100 of them. So it seems like, yeah, it seems like a pretty big win. And it, <laughs> it was literally like, it was, it, was, it was five minutes to implement, five minutes but plus two years of agonizing over whether we should do it. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it seems like, it seems like uh, I was worried. I was expecting that we were going to take a pretty good hit initially and then hopefully it would recover over time. But no, it was so. Yeah. So, and I also um, at the same time I went in and made some changes in Google Analytics so that we can actually see now. Um, I'm I'm posting um when we when we get a page hit now I'm sending Google An Analytics the, the author's name, the, the all the tags and the categories on the post and the publish date. So I can go in and I can say all the blog posts we published last year. Um, how much traffic did we get from them last week? Oh, cool. So nice. it's, yeah, so it's, and John, I'm actually, um, so I've long suspected that we're not getting much long-term benefit out of our current guest posting approach. And so all, yep. the, uh, all the posts that we published that were not published by you um, and were not like landing pages that I created, all, that, all those pages last year, um, Sorry, everything we published in 2016 as a guest post accounts for about less than 3% of our overall traffic. What? Oh, wow. So, yeah, so we published like, so we, I, I looked at, um, so we have about 220 guest posts right now. And every, so for every guest post that we've published since the beginning of guest posting on Simple Programmer accounts for only 7% of the overall traffic to the site. So the majority of the traffic is still John's stuff. Yeah, so basically the, the growth we had last year was what we suspected, which was all the career guide posts mm -hmm. um, th that John created that were all like kind of SEO, like a lot of those were SEO targeted. Basically, all the growth we've seen in the last two years has come from those posts. So let me ask you this question. 2016, yeah. you had um, guest posts. Right. You had John's posts. Right. So... Just from the 2016 John post, not the before post, but just from 2016. That's a good question. How much time? How much traffic did you get? Uh, I don't know, but I can tell you that in two minutes if you guys talk about something else. Yes. <laughs> that, that, that is exactly the question I, wa I was going to ask. Yeah. Nice. And how many posts were on? How many posts were for each of them? So yeah, it could, it could be long tail. It could it could just be that we've got such a big ball right now that it's hard mm -hmm. to move it. To, no, to it, grow it so no, that it was only everything so is long tail. We only get about we we only get about eight. Um, I mean, yeah. Okay, let me just look it up. I'll just just yeah. talk talk amongst yourselves, and I will. I can tell you that very easily. So just make sure you also give us the number of posts for each, so we know exact comparison here. Yeah. Definitely, we saw the biggest month of blog hits, over 300,000 page views for January. So that was our new record. Yeah. Pretty cool. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, and John, most of that growth came from... So most of the growth in the last few months from the site has come from about five posts. Yeah, one, yeah, from SEO one, like, those posts. Yep. Yep. What would be really interesting too is to do that uh, that pruning. 
Remember we were talking about yes. deleting a bunch of blog posts? Yep. Uh, like pruning the, 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 the really shitty posts that hard, hardly get any traffic and seeing if that boosts the search rankings even more. Yeah, that's kind of a one-way street. <laughs> yeah, but but the thing is, like, you're we're talking when we looked at like the eighty twenty on that, it was like deleting the the eighty or ninety percent of posts that only account for like one percent of the traffic or two percent of the traffic. Like there yeah. there was like a so it doesn't who cares? You lose one or two percent. Like it's a it's a gamble worth taking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Oh. Crazy. While Josh is looking that up, I, I think I'll go ahead and just chime in with what I've got going on here. Yeah, do it. So um, as you can see, I'm not at home. I'm in <laughs> Atlanta right now, or Alpharetta, if you if, if the distinction means anything to you. Um, and uh, I'm here at NGE Atlanta, which is the Angular Conference. And um, they've been they've been just setting me up so that I've been interviewing the speakers. I've interviewed a few other people who are here that are notable in the community that aren't speaking this time around. Um, and I'm I'm just going to be putting those up on my YouTube channel, and I'll probably repurpose some of it for um, for other content for the shows and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's been kind of fun and interesting and. Uh, I got sponsored to come out here, so I actually made money on this trip. Um, nice. But I think I think overall, uh, this kind of thing is going to be very uh, helpful. I think it's going to help us gain traffic, but um, I need to get a little bit more of a system around it, is what I figured out. So instead of having the conference organizer say, <clears throat> hey, well, we'll just send people to you after their talks, um, I need to just sit down with them and schedule when they're going to be in here. And that way I know when I have to be where and what's going on. Um, I also figured out that the camera that I bought doesn't have an audio um, input. No, oh, sure. So I can't hook a microphone to it, which sucks. So. Oh, man. I'm probably going to get a different yeah, camera. Yeah, but you... But. Yeah, you've got a you've got a uh, a digital recorder though, right? That you're using. Yeah, yeah. I do, but um, sometimes they record at, at slightly different rates, and so there's audio drift. Ugh. And oh. so you've got to make sure that you line it all up. So um, I'll probably wind up doing it for this set of interviews, and next week I'm in Oakland doing the same thing. So probably have to do it for those two, but then I'll wind up getting a new. You might as well do it with your phone. The video. Yeah. It's true. And plug audio into your phone because the video quality doesn't really matter as much as the audio quality does. That's true. Yeah, yeah that that's actually not a bad idea. So I might actually do that. Just get a clip from my phone to go on there. Yeah, and that's... just lighting, like if you get some lights, then the phone video quality will be just as good. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, so that seems to be working out okay. Uh, the rest of it is just, I have just been, so my social media person quit. Um, I didn't fire her, she just quit. Um, she's, she, she took on too much work, and since I was paying her the least, I was the one that got cut. So um, that's fine, actually. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to stream everything for everything else so that while I'm here, I don't have to keep, you know, dealing with everything else. Because um, Michelle keeps sending emails, I don't know how to handle this, and you know, I, I don't see him for a day or so, and then it's, you know, anyway. So, yeah, just just working on that. But um, yeah, after after our talk last week, um, I actually upgraded my uh, Google uh, G Suite account to the business Google. Nice. And I'm just going to put everything in there. I'm going to move everything off of Dropbox because Dropbox is a freaking disaster right now. And um, and then uh, I have a bunch of stuff in my personal um, Google Drive that I'm going to move over to the business. Yeah, it also acts as a backup. You can literally use it as a backup. You don't need any more, like, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, any of those backup sites? Because uh -huh. it will do automatic backup. 
So it's gotten much smarter than back in the day. You can set up right. whatever folders you want to back up, so you're always protected. OK, guys, I've got numbers. All right. So in 2016, it looks like we published, I'm just scanning here. OK, yeah, we published 63 guest posts. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm seeing. And um, those account, those together account for a total, wait, um, I don't have the actual number. But so in the in last week, so se in the last seven days, those accounted for 1.49% of our page views. In the last seven days. Yeah, so everything we published in 2016. Now, except for John's stuff. Now, if we look at John's stuff, uh, it accounts for 5.88%. What John published in 2016. Yeah, so... How many articles did he publish? Well, no, no, no. Uh, wait, hang on, hang on. This is, hang on. I was w one a week. Yeah. Well, I guess if you count my YouTubes, then it'd be two a week. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yep. Yeah. So there were 84 posts from John, but they they accounted for... Five, so a, a couple more, maybe 20 more... But it, it's like four times it was four times more traffic that we're getting from that. Oh wow! So what we're doing ain't working. <laughs> um, yeah, but you just have numbers to know that, right? You just yeah. bring in your guest posts, then you're on the same. Thing. What's that? If you just bring in more guest posts, then you're on the same. Like you quadruple the number of guest posts, it's still working. <laughs> um, or what if what if we ten x the number of guest posts? Boom. <laughs> it, it, that would, yeah, it would work. It would work. It, it, we would get to be like, I mean, so, so the best that do that for sure. The best guess. Well, see, this is what I saw with, this is why I quit site point <laughs> is because it was the same deal. And actually like if you took out the top, there were only three, there were only two guest posts that, uh, well, let's see, two of those posts account for almost 50% of all the traffic. Mm -hmm. And three of yeah. them account for, well, four of them account for close to sixty percent. So, so it's not true that if we if we if we published for, well, I guess if we published four times more, then we probably would end up with, you know, that there would be three there'd be ten of them that would do well, and the rest of them would all be useless. But yeah, like seriously, there are there are a bunch of posts here that only got brought us one, like the the bottom. 10 posts only brought us one visit. But the week. last seven days might not be a good enough metric. Can you look at them bigger? Um, I can't because I just started collecting this data. Uh, OK. But yeah, because I mean, it might be. I mean, yeah. I, no, I mean, I like these numbers are pretty stable. Like it might shift a little bit, but it wouldn't. It, it's not going to that's not going to make a huge difference. So when the guest yeah, posts come in, first... give them guidelines for like SEO search and you know, keyword and all yeah. that. Yeah. Well, what what I'm going to be doing is um, doing key, doing keyword research, and I mean, I'm I'm a, I'm I'm not just going to make this decision rashly, but I'm wondering if it would be make if it would make more sense for us to just publish. We'll go back to publishing one post a week, but really keyword research it ahead of time, and you know, like really make sure that we're putting the effort into it um, because. Because what we're doing right now is like, like Elise has been telling me that it's a ton. She's telling us she's saying that we're our we're their their most labor intensive um, client, <laughs> and she's wanting to raise. <laughs> she's making noises about wanting to raise the rates. So like, I'm definitely not willing to pay more for what we're getting. Like, what we're getting now is, you know, not really working all that well, and I'm definitely not willing to pay. I would not be willing to pay twice as much for what we're getting. Right. How much are you paying for your articles? What's that? How much are you paying for your articles? We don't pay anything for the articles. We're paying, we're paying for the team to uh, work with writers who are contributing the articles. So we're paying an editorial team basically, and they are. The, it's it's similar to SitePoint. Like with SitePoint, I was a paid editor, and I, my job was to coordinate with the writers and pit and and you know take take pitches from writers. Um, turn, turn, help them turn them into blog posts and, and get them published and everything. Um, and what I saw was that it was very frustrating because the um, the traffic, like it just, I would get like around a couple thousand page views off of the 
articles when they first came out and then nothing. Like I did it for like four yeah. to six months and we didn't, I didn't see any growth any, at all in the channel, like zero. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's, it's because you have to be, you have to be really, really strategic about the keywords. And if you're taking pitches from, from writers, they're not going to have that information. So you either have to give them a lot of guidance ahead of time and have them ba basically tell them what article to write. Um, or you just have to like hire writers to go after and, and write specific, um, you know, articles tar targeting specific keywords. What, John? I was going to say it's the nature of the beast to some degree. Like, I mean, when articles first come out, they're going to have page views. That's the other thing, like, is when when the the post first comes out, it's going to have, like, 2,000 page views, maybe 1,000 right. page views the first day. So that is traffic. I mean, if you don't produce those articles, you will definitely lower the, the overall site traffic. So the long tail on stuff is 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 rare. It's, you know, very few articles actually end up, but you're never going to hit any of those if you don't continually publish. But well, I think but the see, answer I, to the question if you, if you is gave me, better SEO. Yeah. If you gave me, if you yeah. printed off this list of articles, it wouldn't be hard to pick out the winners. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, the, um, it's, it's pretty easy. I mean, it's pretty easy to tell. I feel like we can. I feel like we can pretty easily. And I'm going to test this out because I, I have I have an article right now that I'm working on with a writer. But I feel like we can actually pretty easily, uh, pick pick articles that are going to do better than yeah. what we would typically get from a from a guest poster. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that makes sense. I think there's, you know, there's there's one picking the right type articles. There's two like the follow up. I think you, you'll probably find if you look at the eighty twenty on those articles that produce the most traffic, that what you'll find is that those articles got some kind of traction. Either the the writer promoted it on something like Hacker News or Reddit, or someone else picked it up and promoted it because uh, there's been a few of those. I don't think so. The two and top once, ones, John, are both. Um... They're both by the same author, and they're both about automation testing. Um, Selenium Web Driver uh, and Best Online Resources to Learn Automation Testing. They're both targeting the keyword aut automation testing, basically. Right. Which is a high volume so, keyword. I mean, we could look up on traffic sources on it, but but I mean, regardless, like yes, keyword is important, but also like getting the most mileage out of it by doing backlinking strategy and keyword optimization after the, after the fact is what, you know, is, is, is going to make yeah, a we difference. Haven't, in a we haven't done any keyword optimization or we haven't done any keyword optimization on these or I haven't done anything with these yet. So these are on my radar to work on, but yeah. But yeah, you'd be surprised. Like, I mean, the backlinking thing, um, I mean, most of our top blog posts only have, it, it really seems like the keywords and the on-page stuff matters more <laughs> um, because we're, we're competing like, uh, I'm seeing in Ahrefs, I'm seeing like, it shows you exactly how many backlinks, like it shows you the full search, uh, the full search result with the, um, like the, the domain rank for each of the, the other sites that you're competing against and how many backlinks they have to that specific article. And like, we'll be, a lot of times we'll be like, we'll have like three or, or five or seven backlinks and we'll be ranking right alongside somebody that has like a hundred or 200 links to that page. Like to build, to build that level of backlinks is, I mean, I don't know that we've ever successfully <laughs> built a single backlink. <laughs> It's really, really difficult to do. Um, yeah. And which is why I kind of think that the strategy is to just really invest in, continuously invest in the content that's doing well so that it, it naturally gets backlinks because, gosh, it is really tough. I mean, I get, I, get, I get hammered with spammers like trying to get me to backlinks that I've never, I've never backlinked anything. And, 
I don't know. I yes, don't, but people I, do do buy penis pumps. They do. <laughs> uh, they do. Just because you don't buy penis pumps doesn't mean that people don't buy penis pumps. Well, no, like, they do, uh, but they do. But it's like it's like point the 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 response rates on spam like that is like point zero one percent. So you just have you have to be able yeah. to send hundreds of thousands of emails to get any any actual results out of it. But there's people like, um, like I said, the Viper Chill guy, you know, uh, Glenn uh, Alsop. He, I mean, he he grows the hell out of sites, you know, mostly using backlinking strategy. I mean, it's just a matter of like hiring him to consult would be a good idea just to get his, you know, his take on it, right? Someone who's yeah. blown up that. Um, and I agree with you though. Like overall, like you know, content it trumps everything else, right? And and picking the right content and the right you know the right articles for the right keywords targeted for sure but there's also you know a lot of fuel that you can get out of stuff with by having the right backlinks that like, could boost it even higher you know yeah my friend uh he's been uh he's uh what's the name uh what's the name of his site sell online send courses online or something he literally like spends just as much time trying to get backlinks as he spends writing the article or more. Like he literally spends weekends just reaching out to people, trying to get backlinks. And he gets backlinks from sites like Teachable and think it's like in all these like high authority sites. And um, he's, you know, he's able to do that pretty consistently right now. Yeah. It's, it's an effort thing. It's like, it just takes a lot of effort to build those backlinks, I agree. But people do it. So yeah, like so I'm looking at right now, I'm looking at the search results for the keyword mobile development, which I got us to number one number one two, by the way, by changing by by just like doing on page optimization. We have six backlinks to that post. We're at number one. Yeah, but see you have to understand something that that's critical here is that there are reason why we're able to do that is because we have such valuable backlinks to our root domain and to, to certain articles. Like the more high authority backlinks, there, there's a reason why Google considers us to be an authority and, and gives us such juice on, on pretty much anything. And it's because of those high quality backlinks. And a lot of that just comes from the fact that uh, some of it's just the interviews I've done, you know, where we're backlinked on O'Reilly, we're backlinked on, you know, um, a lot of the big sites, you know, right. software engineering radio, mm -hmm. like all, all those kind of sites are, are backlinking to us at the root domain. So that's giving us a lot of credibility. So even though it might not be on the individual article, you know, that's the, the reason why, I mean, wh why else does it, is it, otherwise anyone would just be able to do like say, oh, I want this keyword, I'll take this keyword. You know, we, we've got a lot going for us because of those, those valuable backlinks that, that's given us that juice. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I've got to get back to interviews here in a minute. Um, but yeah, I just got an email that made me smile. <laughs> the creator. Was it a penis? Was it a penis pump? Was it a penis <laughs> pump? No, that would have been uh, great timing, though. The creator of UJS is going to come on our first episode of the View podcast. We're starting next. Nice. Week. That's going to be a tough act to follow. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll get people to follow it, though. Anyway, I, I, yeah, I've got to jump off. I, I probably have people coming in here any minute. But. Cool. All right, you want to give us your thoughts? Should we do our thoughts for the week, for the day? Yeah, sorry to make it end early. Um, I mean, most of my thoughts this week have been just about building systems and just automate stuff. And we've talked ad nauseum about that stuff, but it's just nice to know how things are going to go, how things are going to go together and what the possibilities are. So I mean, just, just getting back to some of the basics there kind of important. Uh, let me see. I got mine. Mine is um, is to when you're pursuing a goal to make sure that you're as much stuff as you do to move you forward towards the goal. Make sure that you remind yourself that 
the things that you do that move you backwards from the goal are uh, nullify out the things you do that move you forward and they do it faster. Right. So, you know, as I've been trying, trying to get to this, this seven elusive 7% body fat goal uh, for a long time. Like, you know, just this week I was like, I just started in the last couple of weeks completely eliminating cheat meals and even, you know, even once a, once a week and basically getting a lot more strict and just, you know, developing the mindset of like, okay, it's, you know, just thinking about that, like, okay, when I'm up in the morning fucking running, you know, five miles or 10 miles and doing all this work, it's like, I really need to like be strict on the, on the other side, on the diet side more so uh, just because if I don't, then, then it's, I'm like nullifying, like it's like such a pointless uh, thing to, to nullify the work that, that you're doing, uh, you know, so it, but it's easy to do like in a lot of, a lot of areas of life, it's easy to like pursue the goal to put in the work, but then be like destroying it on, on the other end. And then it's like you, you, your net effect is you get nowhere and it's, you know, it's just, it's a common, common, uh, I'd say cycle that I find myself in very often and really just a tipping of the balance, just a slight uh, in the, in the positive direction makes all the difference, right? It, it's that nice edge of, I've talked about before. It's like, if you're on one side of it, cum compound effect is that net, like you'll be a fucking homeless person in 10 years. But if you're on the other side of the knife's edge, which is just a slight, just a very slight alteration where you're at a positive gain, you'll be a millionaire or a decamillionaire in 10 years. And, you know, realizing how critical that little bit of a difference is, is, is really, really important. Yep. Nice. Well, my, my, my thought for this week is um, when you're, when you're, when you're struggling with a problem for a long time, it's really easy to get into the mindset that you're just never going to solve it. But you have to believe that there's a solution if, if you're going to ever find the solution. <laughs> and um, so I've been, oh my gosh, I have been killing, I have been like really frustrated with this shopping cart software situation for the longest time. And finally, like I, I was I was pretty I was just like kind of like at my wits end on like Monday or Tuesday I was like I I just can't I cannot find the right combination of of shopping cart software and you know software to deliver the course content it all sucks like woe is me and then I was I I, I took like half a step back and um said okay no there has to be there has to be a way to solve this and something like flipped in my brain and I just started coming up with a bunch of ideas that I hadn't had before. And I ended up, so we're, I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I realized that I could separate the, the shopping cart, the, the taking of the order from the delivery of the, of the course content. And I'm going to use a product that specializes in delivering really good online courses and just not give up on, on trying to create that in WordPress like I was doing. And just by separating those two things, like I think I might have this done in like a week or two. <laughs> what are you? What are you? What are you gonna use? What's that? What are you going to use? I'm going to use Podia. So uh -huh. yeah, I, yep. Um, so and yeah, I I, I I I took another look at Teachable or uh, yeah, Teachable, um, and they still have a lot of the issues that I didn't like about them the first time around. So uh, I'm going to stick with. I, I have met with Spencer from Podia yesterday, and. Um, talked to him like I talked him through my whole the whole workflow that I'm building and showed him how the one click upsells work and how and they're actually going to be building one click upsells in the next few months anyway so I'm, I'm actually thinking that I might be able to help him dog food it out and basically get him to build exactly what I want and then I can just be out of this business of managing shopping carts entirely which I would be very happy <laughs> so <laughs> Cool. Well, yeah. very happy that Thrive is integrated with Teachable, so I don't have to do shit now. Thrive Cart, Teachable work. Yeah, well, Thrive Cart. The reason I, I'm not going to go back to Thrive Cart um, because they don't do the one-click upsells don't work properly. We were losing about a third of our sales with their one-click upsell system. So, what, what, okay, we can talk about it later. I guess. Yeah, yeah. If you have, probably haven't implemented that yet, um, but when you do, there's a pretty big gotcha. So, oh shit. Yeah, it sucks. Google has one click up so too, so maybe that's the next step. Um, oh fuck. 
this thing never ends. It doesn't. Uh, no. Okay, so my realization, I guess, over the last uh, couple of weeks or maybe a month has been like the customer journey, understanding the customer journey, like making sure that you serve them at the point at which they are the highest, uh, the most excited about your product, mm. right? When, especially when they're buying or when they're subscribed, that's when you are most likely to be able to upsell, sell more, do all those things. Because over time, there's a drop off. And every day you spend not touching with them, every day you spend not contacting them or not talking to them about anything, you're losing them. They're, mm -hmm. You're getting to the point where even if they're a customer, they don't care about you anymore. They just, the product was a history and now they're back to like forgetting about you. So yep. Yep. you've got to get them very quickly as soon as you get them, like continue to nurture the relationship rather than let it go. Okay. Yeah, so that's something I'm working actively towards for this iteration as well. Cool. cool. All righty, guys. All right, cool. See you all next week. Yep. Yep. <laughs> all right. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Want to start a business, but you just know how to code. Listen to John, Josh, and Derek as we figure it out. We are the Yancho programmers, and we'll teach you straight.